So you're probably a content maker, a manager, or hopefully a model, hello, who's tried of browsing the web, searching for sites that copied your content. In this video, I'm going to walk you through three tools that allow you to easily check for plagiarism, find image copyright violations, and make sure your photos, images, art, you name it, is not being pirated anywhere on the open web. All of the tools I'm going to show you in this video can be found on botster.io. None of the tools that I'll show you today require coding knowledge. They're very basic, but they get the job done. And the first tool in today's selection is the Google Image Reverse Search Bot that allows you to specify source image links, for example, links to your photos from your website and get the links to the websites where these images are being publicly posted. By the way, if any of this sounds way too complicated for you, we have a thorough blog post with step-by-step -step guides on how to work with each of the bots that I mentioned in the video, link in the description, so make sure to give it a read. If you have any questions left after watching this video, reading the blog post, or just have questions, make sure to drop them into the comment section down below. So the first thing that you will need to do to start using the reverse image bot is sign up on botster.io. Link is also in the description down below. And after you do, you can find the bot by using the search navigation and by simply typing the reverse image. Pick the first option and on this next page you will find a thorough description of what the bot does, how it works, and I do recommend that you read the description because it has a lot of answers to the questions that you might have, um, but I'm going to show you the whole process in action and I'm just going to click on the start bot button. Now this is the stage where you tell the bot what to do, the bot creates the job for you, then it completes the job and you take the data delivered uh, by the bot which is stored in that job. Does that make sense? So the first step is to name your job and I'm gonna name it, uh, this step is optional but I'm just gonna do it for the video, a demonstration, so I'm gonna name it test reverse image lookup and all you have to do next is provide a list of links to the images that you would like the bot to scan the web for. So I only have one image link which I'm going to paste but you can paste more than that obviously. It's important that you paste um, direct images not the links to web pages with those images so not like um, a link to your blog post. You need to paste links to the images. They usually uh, have a .jpg or .png extensions. So I've pasted my link um, to the image and now I can tweak the time and scheduling settings. I can tell the bot to run periodically and schedule data delivery. So for example, every week the bot will run this process and will scan the web for uh, mentions of this particular image. Well, not mentions, but usages rather. So every week I will receive a file with links to web pages that are using this image. I'm not gonna do any of that in this video. And finally, you can configure your notifications. For example, you can ask the bot to send you the results of the job via email, upload them to Google Drive, send them to your Slack, Telegram, or you can create an, a complex automation sequence using a webhook or Zapier if you know how to use that. I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm just gonna click on the green start this bot button and watch the bot create the job. Now, as you can see, the bot created the job and it is now active. All I have to do now is wait for the bot to complete the job. And when that happens, the green active label will change into the blue completed label. And I'm just gonna fast forward this video because I want to save you some time. So let's do that. As you can see, it took some time for the bot to complete the job. And now we have our data available as a CSV, Excel, or a JSON file. You can also view the data using our online viewer. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna click on this view data button and um, show you the data. So as you remember, I provided a single link and the bot found a bunch of websites that are using uh, this image. So here's the list of the websites that you can find this image 
on. You can quickly check by clicking on any of the links. The bot also grabs the title of the web page, which sometimes can simplify your work process. Now you can, again, download the data from this page by using these uh, options here, or you can make this page public and send it to whoever by clicking on this button here, grabbing the link and forwarding it to, you know, a, a colleague or somebody else. The next tool that will help you fight plagiarism is the Google Image Scraper. And it does exactly what you think, as in it scrapes images for a list of keywords that you provide. This is a much broader tool in terms of results returned, but it also is very powerful. You can submit a bunch of queries such as Mr. Beast photos, Mr. Beast leaked photos, Jesus. And then simply look at the images that the tool returns. We also have a text version of this tool that returns results from the main Google search results page, but I won't be showing it to you in this video as I already have a whole other video about how to use uh, that tool and I'm gonna put the link in the description as well. But now let's quickly go through the Google Image Scraper and I'll show you how to use that. So by now you already know that to find a bot on botster.io, all you need to do is uh, use the search function and just type image scraper and pick the first result. Again, there's a bunch of information about the bot, which I encourage you to read. But for this video, we're going to skip that stage and click on the start this bot button. Give a name to our job. Let's name it Google image scraping test. And all we need to do now is provide a list of keywords that we would like the bot to return the images for. So let's look for Elon Musk and I don't know, Steve Jobs. Additionally, you can select the geolocation of the user agent, which the bot will mimic, which comes in really handy if you're after some narrow niche local results. This is not the case in this video, and I'm just going to skip this um, step. And now you can tell the bot how many results you would like to grab. So I'm gonna go for 10. So the bot will return up to 10 images per keyword. So 10 per uh, Elon Musk and 10 per Steve Jobs. I'm gonna keep the use safe search check box just in case and skip the notification block. Let's start the bot. Like in the previous example, it creates the job and now it's actively running. I'm gonna fast forward the video one more time and take you straight to the results. Okay, the bot delivered the job and we can grab our files, but let's go ahead and view the data. So we have a bunch of results for Elon Musk and Steve Jobs, and you can see both the images and the uh, websites that host these images. So in case there's a match and the bot detected an image for a certain keyword, you can quickly understand whether uh, it's an image that you're looking for, if it's one of your images, for example, and then click on the link and see who used that image and how they did it. Now let's carry on to the final tool of the video, which is the Google Lens Image Extractor. The difference between using this and the Google Reverse Image Bot is that this one will return similar images, not identical images. It works great with finding modified and adjusted versions of the original images, different angles of shots, stuff like that. If you ever used Google Lens, you should know what I'm talking about. Now let me show you how that bot works for better understanding. Let's quickly find the bot, click on the start bot button. And just like before, we need to provide a list of links to the images. Just going to leave everything as is and start this bot. The job is running and I'm gonna fast forward this video one last time. Okay, the bot is done. Let's hit the view data button and look at the results. Okay, the bot returned a bunch of results, a bunch of data, and if you look at the thumbnails, you will understand what I was talking about when I said similar images. Now, these images, although they're not identical, you can tell that they are either modified versions of the initial image or they were taken during the same photo shoot or same event. So if you're looking for similar images, this tool is the way to go. Okay, so we discussed three tools to find and prevent plagiarism of your content, art, and photographs. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Remember to subscribe for more automation content from myself, and I'll see you in the next video.